Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Madison Charlton from MLC Tech and it has been a good while. It's great to see you all again. And today we're doing a video on firmware. Now I've seen a lot of confusion out there online and amongst talking to other people is there's a great confusion of what is firmware and the function of this. Now firmware is essential to the operation of many electronic devices acting as the foundational software that ensures functionality and stability. Now while firmware is commonly used interchangeably with software, they are not the same thing and are quite different. So sit back and relax as we explore the distinctions between firmware and software and how it interacts with hardware. Now to start off with, what is firmware? Now firmware is a type of software that is permanently embedded within the hardware of the device itself. It provides the low level control and instructions required for a device to function. Now, firmware and software are very interconnected, but are very distinct components of modern technology. Now, firmware itself is stored directly upon the hardware itself, and this provides the critical instructions for smooth device operation. And this is very crucial for the operation of hardware devices, as it serves as a bridge between the hardware and the high level software that's running on your system. And this ensures that the device functions as intended and performs optimally. Now, firmware itself is found on a wide range of devices from your smartphones, computer motherboards, routers, gaming consoles, cameras, and other household appliances, such as even refrigerators. It enables these devices to boot up, communicate with other components, and also execute tasks as well. Now let's take a deeper dive at the differences of firmware versus software. Now, firmware itself is a subset of software. And while software includes applications, operating systems, and utility programs that can be installed and run on devices, firmware is specific to the hardware itself. And now the main differences between firmware and software are firstly, firmware is closely tied to the hardware, while software has a broader scope and supports various applications and tasks. Firmware is also typically stored permanently on the hardware, whereas software is stored upon external storage devices and loaded into memory as needed. Firmware also is managed differently. Now, firmware updates are specific to the device itself and can be more challenging to install than regular software updates. And also the execution of how firmware operates is also very different to software. Now firmware, as we've already established, runs directly on the hardware, while software runs on top of an operating system. Now let's take a look at firmware from a different perspective, and that is how it is different from hardware. Now, hardware, as we all know, is the physical components of a device, such as a PCB, a processor to the memory. So it's the physical stuff that you can physically hold in your hands that is responsible for, well, everything in our modern age, pretty much. Now, firmware itself is very different, of course. It is stored on the hardware itself, and is a set of instructions to control how that physical hardware operates. Now, while firmware itself resides within the hardware, it is not hardware itself, but as we've already established, it provides the necessary instructions for this hardware's operation. Now, another angle that is worth looking at that I've seen a lot of misconception online is firmware versus drivers. But drivers are software components that facilitate communication between the operating system and the specific hardware device. So it's very similar to hardware, but on the other hand, firmware is responsible for the overall operation of the hardware device, which may include drivers within its code. So while software drivers at times can be separate from firmware, sometimes this operation is bundled within the firmware itself. But what is the main difference between firmware and drivers? Well, the main difference between these two as you rely in their scope and purpose. Firmware typically provides the core instructions for the device's operations, whereas drivers enable the operating system to interact with specific hardware components. 
And now I want to circle back to a point that I made earlier, and that is the upgradability and how firmware is managed within a system. Now, downloading and installing firmware updates can vary depending on what type of device you have. Typically, firmware updates are obtained from the manufacturer's website, such as a standalone download that you can install manually, or through dedicated software provided by the manufacturer itself. For example, firmware updates on your iPhone are installed, for, are installed within the operating system menus or on a system update such as your PlayStation 5, which works in almost a seamless manner now. So when you get a system update, you're not just doing an operating system update. They also provide firmware updates for the console itself as well. And whilst these operations are still separate on PC, OS updates are still separate from motherboard firmware updates. Advancements in this space has made installing firmware updates to your motherboard very easy through manufacturer Pacific software or even easy flash utilities in most modern biases. Now, in some cases, updating your firmware, especially on like your graphics card or your computer motherboard, can seem scary. So do you have to update your firmware? Well, firmware updates are essential for maintaining device performance, improving compatibility and fixing security vulnerabilities in some cases. While it is not always mandatory, it is generally recommended to keep firmware up to date to ensure optional device functionality. A prime example of this is that CPU microcode updates are pushed through for motherboard firmware updates, so it's very important to keep up to date to get the latest microcode updates, which can ensure the latest security on your CPU, as well as additional functionality and improved performance. And in some cases can stop your CPU degrading, from being in a constant state of elevated voltage. Um, not looking at anyone in particular here, apart from <laughs> Intel. Other devices such as routers, monitors, smart TVs, drones, digital cameras, and many other devices out there usually require periodic firmware updates to improve functionality, and in some cases, fix software bugs as well. And our last point is how long should a firmware update take? Now, this can, of course, again, vary depending on what type of device you have and the complexity of this update. This could range from a few minutes up to much greater periods. And while you're updating the firmware of a chosen device, you will usually see warnings not to interrupt the firmware update process as firmware directly affects a device's core software and functionality, which controls how the hardware functions. If the update is interrupted, it can corrupt the firmware, potentially rendering your device unusable, which is a term usually referred to as bricking. So it's very important that you are careful when updating your firmware, as you don't want to result in a bricked motherboard BIOS, as they can be quite difficult to fix at times. I myself am very fortunate that I have a motherboard with dual BIOS, and also a GPU with three different BIOS options, which can, which if they were to be corrupted, they are recoverable, but it takes a lot more effort compared to recovering from a failed OS update. And I can imagine going through a bricked motherboard BIOS can cause the average user to just throw away the computer and just want to either abandon PC gaming altogether and go buy a PlayStation or just send it to a repair shop or something and get it fixed under warranty. So it's important to pay close attention to when updating your firmware. Anyway, that's going to be it for today's video. If you like this video in any way, shape or form, make sure to give this video a like and maybe subscribe for more content like this in the future. Now, I just want to say on a personal note, it's been really good to come back and make a video after such a long hiatus. I have just been so busy and truth be told, as I progress further on into this year, I'm going to have even less free time. Like my life at the moment has been just very busy. I have so much work on at the moment. So it's going to be difficult to make as many videos as I used to make, but it's really been, but it feels really good to be back and out here rambling about technology, which is my special interest. But anyway, before I ramble on too much, I just want to thank you once again for watching and I hope to see you in another video soon. So goodbye for now.